Investing friends, friends of financial freedom, welcome into Investors Club. Got a great show for you. What is the value of this awesome disease modifying therapy that cassava has for Alzheimer's disease? Looks like they have for Alzheimer's disease. We're going to get the data around one year from today, basically, probably exactly one year from today, one exactly to the second. So, what is it worth? We've been saying that it's worth $30,000. How did we get to $30,000 a year? By looking at all the other small molecules that are life saving small molecules. Well, I went to look at, okay, what, what, what are other people saying? What are, the, what are the studies saying that a disease modifying therapy is worth? Well, it says they're worth $30,000 a year. And, that, and I didn't get there originally from by looking at these studies. I got there by looking at all the other small molecules that are life saving. And I was saying to people, can you find one that's lower than 30,000? Because 30,000 is the floor. Some are going for a quarter million. And 30,000 is the floor. And now here, again, looking at it just a completely different way, what is the, given the costs of Alzheimer's, what would a disease modifying therapy be worth? 30,000 bucks, just like that. So the, 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 it's 30,000. And these are studies, you know, the peak years, the peak sales years can be like 20, 30 or whatever. So, but with inflation and stuff, 30,000 is the floor. So let's dive in. Let's dive in. Labu having a day battling back up five bucks, 5%. Good for you. There's another one there I won't mention, but I hope Marie got it. Uh, good stuff. Cassava was up. Did it go down? Oh, my. It went down. Down, down in an earlier round. It was up. It went down. Okay. Let's see what... Uh, who cares what it does now? Because the because uh, this data is coming. By the way, I think tomorrow is the last day you can buy cassava. Buy cassava shares, common shares, by tomorrow to participate in those warrants. And by the way, not that you should, but just so you know, if, if you if you buy a, a stock and it pays a dividend, this is a dividend, and then you sell it before you get the dividend, but you owned the stock on the day that you needed to own it to get the dividend, you still get the dividend, even if you sell the stock a week later or whatever it is, you, the cash still comes your way. Now, that's not really a, a way to, to, to get anything free because if, a, if there's a $100 stock and it pays out a $1 dividend, it dips to 99, generally speaking. Maybe the market was going up a lot. Maybe the market was going down a lot that day. So there's not, you don't really actually get the game something. But just so, as, a, as a funny thing, you, you, you got to buy it by tomorrow uh, to get those shares. But the, uh, by the way, if you didn't want to be in the common because we've been talking about the calls or whatever, you could sit in them for a couple of days, I think even just one day, and then sell those common shares. Uh, this is an extra time just to be careful. But then you could, like, if you wanted to go to the calls, you could do that and then still get the warrants. So kind of interesting. Uh, so let's talk about what this is worth. Let's talk about what this therapy is worth. Here we go. We have how much would a treatment for Alzheimer's disease offer a cost-effective threshold? This is from the current Alzheimer's research. This is 2020. And they say the maximum cost effective price of a disease modifying therapy per patient is $22,000 and $15,000 from societal and payer perspectives, respectively. So, 15000 20, so 20, 22000 they said the maximum cost effective price. They say 22000 Now, this is from 2020. And again, the peak sales year is going to be 2030 or something. So, if it's 22 here, 30, 30, 30. And then this, we'll get to that in a, well, we'll just, okay, so if these get the big numbers, when I said that this is $30,000 a year, and we only said one and a half million patients, that would be more than that. Uh, and then we used a multiple of five, which is normal. Uh, and then uh, I guess we used a couple of multiples depending on the, uh, depending on, on the calculation we did. But anyway, we got to 225 billion. And it's like, geez, that's so high, Joe, come on. This thing's like a $1 billion company, $2 billion company. Well, here, this is from the Alzheimer's Association. They say the projected uh, gross, they say with a total of $5.5 trillion, the projected gross societal value of a hypothetical Alzheimer's treatment is substantial. So I projected less than 5% of that. They're saying it's worth $5.5 trillion. And by the way, they don't include... Uh, all the other indications it might work on also, because when you figure out this really tough nut to crack Alzheimer's, as it turns out, you're figuring out this whole new paradigm uh, with a whole bunch of other diseases to treat with it. But what we won't even calculate any of that. Five and a half trillion. So maybe we should up our 225 billion a little bit. What do you think? Up it a little bit. It could be, it could go up a little bit. So we'll keep it at 225 billion. But just to show, they're saying it's worth 20 times that. 20 times that. 
uh, here, this is, what is, what is this Adjukenumab worth? Well, they're saying it's worth about $5,500 a year, but that's because it doesn't work. Using estimates of effectiveness based on pooling data from both pivotal trials, they say like the most, uh, uh, I think they say optimistic or something like that. Looking at optimistic, it can be, it's, it's like $5,500, but their data was horrible. Their data was horrible. It doesn't help. So they're, they're saying, they're saying 5,500 bucks, but that's if it doesn't even work. It doesn't even work. And then this is ICER. We talked about this before. Uh, I guess I needed to. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, ICER. Sorry if you couldn't see some of that stuff. This is uh, we talked about this before. This is uh, where we originally, when we originally uh, looked at what, what a disease modifying therapy could be. We, we originally looked at this report, but we didn't, we didn't. I don't know. We forgot about it or whatever. But anyway, here is a great article that we've seen before. For, it's a really in-depth article from Jack Lou. He goes. He says so. Assessing how much an Alzheimer's drug is worth. He goes through donimumab, uh, aducanumab, and all their data and all of uh, the studies projecting markets and things like that. And then he ends with this ICER report, Institute for Clinical and Economic Review, saying what the what uh, a drug a drug would be worth, a good drug would be worth. For the purpose of this analysis, it is assumed that the representative drug candidate would achieve the optimistic treatment benefit. So yeah, we've looked at this before and said there's an optimistic, it's the optimistic treatment benefit such that its annual benchmark price has a range of 17,350 to 25,350 with a middle point of 21,000. Applying the average gross to net ratio of 70% to the 21% 21,000 benchmark, the list price of the representative drug would be $30,000. If you take the biotech bootcamp, we'll run it again, but it goes from the manufacturer to the wholesaler to the retailer to the patient. And you, you, you discount along the way. So you, you, from the, you, you discount like it's like 24% or 26%. So he's, he's saying add, uh, add whatever. Uh, this, he's saying this is only 70% of the, of the, of the amounts. So the list price would be 30,000. So again, 30,000. And by the way, the peak sales year is going to be 2030. So at least 30,000. 30,000 is a floor. So we'll go with 30,000. So that's it. It's 30,000 bucks. 30,000 bucks. And with that, my investing friends, let's go to the phones. Tom Lou, good to see you. Hi, Joe. Stock Twit claimed Saba was approached by Merck. So I looked for that patent from Merck that cites Lindsey Burns and Hao Yan Wang, and I couldn't find it. But that's what I was thinking too, my man, is that if uh, they're citing them, it, they, they, they could be that's part of their uh, part of their strategy is, look, we're going we're gonna to try to rob you guys. We're going to patent your stuff, even citing you, and try to rob you, try to try to end around you. Uh, but why, why don't you uh, sell out to us instead? So yeah, Merck, absolutely. There's no way there's a big pharma that's not interested. There's no way. There's no way. When they signed these three guys, the guy, again, they would have got to look at the open label extension. Who knows? They may have shown the open label extension to big pharma by now. Because that, that's, again, absolutely something you would do if, if you were wanting to do a partnership. They're not going to do it blindly. They would want to need to take a look, sign an NDA. Now, can you trust it? I don't know. Can you trust those people to, to keep their word? Who knows? But anyway, interesting stuff. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, Merck could easily be. They got a huge sales force, a big farm. They're, they're a big one. Hi, Joe. How long after phase three trials do you think it will take to be available to the general public? Not soon enough, unfortunately. Uh, 10 month turnaround time. I think if you get one of these special programs, they'd like to do a six month turnaround time but it still takes a few months to get the NDA together. Uh, gosh, best case scenario, like really best case scenario. Like we'll, we'll get the data end of 2024. The best case scenario is like a year later, it, but that's, that's still really soon. So beginning of 2026, probably later in 2026. Uh, that, that's reasonable, but that's, uh, but that's about what we're looking at. Now remember they started manufacturing uh, contract. They, they got a great uh, manufacturing contract organization, whatever they are, uh, like, like a two years ago. So the, the and, and and manufacturing, we just saw what was it checkpoint just just took a bump, took a hit from for the manufacturing, which is always a wild card. Anyway, they got they, they got all that stuff. They started early on all that stuff, so it should be good. Should be good. Good question mark, Sean. Good to see you, Anavex. 
received positive indication from CHMP in the European Union filing for market approval in 2024. Wonder if Saba has looked into EU, UK, Korea. I don't know. Uh, the markets just are not as good. They, they just don't give you the pricing for one thing. I, I, I think Cassava might have even mentioned they, they would do that with a partner. I, I think they'll wait to do that with a partner. I think the partners obviously have more of a reach and they got their hands full. But great, yeah, great to point out. And Anabex was up a bunch. It was up like 12% last I saw. JD, hey, Joe, when the warrants, good to see you, Jay, when the warrants are distributed, wouldn't the share price drop because the shares are being diluted? Or is this already factored in? Thanks for all you do and happy holidays is always good question. On one hand, yes, but then you say the other thing is that it's already known about. So, so it's, it has to do with what are the shorts going to do? They would have to reshort. Somebody has to sell at that point. So, if you're, if when you get your, when you, when you get your warrant, if you exercise it, now you have your extra shares. You, you have your extra shares with these, the guy that had, that had more than two thirds of the FBI reporting to him and this other person that has 14 FDA approvals and this other M&A maven just signed on after very likely looking at the open label extension. They just signed on. Are you gonna, and, and we're gonna get data in a year and the biggest unmet medical need in the world. And I'm saying that a 200X year is, you know, what, what 100X year is about what we're looking at. As far as market, yeah, I mean, what are you gonna do? So, uh, uh, so, are you, so you need, somebody needs to sell. So you're right that it does dilute in, in nominal terms uh, in that the number of shares has gone up. You're right, but somebody has to sell. Are you selling? When you exercise your shares, are you selling them? Now, if you're selling them and buying calls, you're putting, again, putting buying pressure. So it's the same. It's, you're actually putting more buying pressure than in that case. Uh, but somebody has to sell. So the shorts would have to reshort, and maybe they will, but they would have to reshort at that point. They would have to recommit to shorting this company that just signed those people. So that's the, that somebody has to sell. So you're right that on that day, the market cap is going to go up a lot because there's more shares nominally now. But somebody has to sell for it to, are you going to sell or are the shorts going to reshort? Somebody has to sell. So you're right, the market cap's going to surge on that day though. Pablo, hello, Joe, thanks for all you do. And it's going to surge as more warrants get exercised along the way if they do. Hello, Joe. My pleasure, my friend. Do you think Saba could fall under 28? Yes. <laughs> I mean, short term, I have no idea, my man. This is wild stuff. But the data, I'm, I'm just convinced is going to be good. I, we always liked it. But the big, big thing was they were going to get robbed. And now that they're gonna, not going to get robbed because this FBI guy. Plus, they would have looked at the data. So it's going to be great. And we're not going to get robbed. So yeah. Hi from Tampa Bay. Keep up your great work. Thank you very much, James. Really appreciate it, my friend. Thanks for being here, my man. Tom Lou, good to see you again. Personally, I think Big Pharma is running out of time. Get the board with Saba before results with contingent value right to secure their positions. Could be, because like, like, uh, like we're saying anyway, they, they're not going to be able to come up with the cash anyway. If they're going to use a CVR anyway, uh, yeah, come up with a whole bunch of cash now, like 50 billion or tw at least 20, uh, and then a whole bunch of shares too, probably, if you're, and, and then on the big CVR. So yeah, a bunch of cash, a bunch of shares, and a big CVR. You can do that now and leave all the upside in the CVR. That's fine with me. You can get a huge, huge deal now. Keep up your great work, James. Thank you so much, my friend. I really appreciate it. Gary, is McRib going to make it? There have been some movement, but no news I've heard of. So how's it doing today? This is one we've been keeping our eye on. McRib, McRib, McRib. Where did you go? There we are. Okay, so yeah, and then we've been talking about this one in the Discord. Like it's been uh, the, the angry trader has been bashing this one down, and we're saying it looks like they're trying to keep it down for the end of the year. Could have a big uh, could have a big run on the turn of the year. Who knows? That that's, that could still happen. Now it's been it was down in the '90s, and it's up to it had a big run, I guess, yesterday. I don't know. I don't know. But it could be an interesting turn of the year play, and I'm—I actually—I I shouldn't say I don't know. I think I think it's a—I think it's a poster child for the stocks that are going to be do really well because it was thrown out, shorted, and thrown out business-wise, like it was acted like it wasn't going to make it. But now, and in in, 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 a, in a great part because it's such a tough environment. But now with the funding environment getting better and with uh, uh, 
with and with their just the funding environment getting better so that there's the lower interest rates but that also remember that's a double there's a double whammy so their prices go up so now even even if it was a tough environment with their prices up it's easier to raise money but also with their prices up it's also guys a lower interest rate environment as well so it's also easier to raise money so these are the types of stocks that can kind of compound on themselves and get healthier and healthier as their price goes up so and and they were they were they were targeted to die and when the environment changed those are the ones that are going to do best like we look found out with the pot stocks I found the three strongest and I got the timing right and they went up like 25 or 30 percent and all the ones that were priced to die doubled. I said, don't buy the ETF because it's full of crap. And it was. And then when, 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 the, when, the, when, the, when the catalyst came that I was right about, all the stuff that was priced to die was the stuff that did best. It way outperformed the strong stuff. So anyway, that's part of the reason why I went to Labu. It's like instead of picking the strongest stuff, I just got cooked on these pot stocks. I should have done way better. I, I'm just going to take the whole field. And, 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 and if you do that, then you can get the leverage. Uh, so, uh, you know, you get the 3x leverage, then you buy a call on that. Uh, and so that's why part of the reason I took the field instead of buying the strongest players. Later, my idea later is like around summer, maybe, the, maybe then it'll be time to switch to the stronger players. So who knows? Simon, why didn't Remy wait until his lawsuit against him was settled before making a dividend? He is accused of having a pump his stock. Please, he is afraid of seeing the share price rise. Simon, it's good to see you, my friend. Uh, 100 million in court. He's never, I mean, they sue these people all the time. Anytime your stock goes down a lot, you get sued. And they went from like 146 to eight. So, so you're going to get sued. <laughs> that happens. There's, comp there's, law, there's law firms that just do that. And uh, they're going to get sued no matter what. So I, I, don't, I don't mind. He's got to do it. This was a great move for the company. So uh, he, I mean, he can't let the frivolous lawsuits control him. But it's good to see you, Simon, my friend. Frederick, if all that are awarded warrants don't sell their warrants, they will moon. Yeah, or if you sell the warrants to buy the calls, that, that'll put more buying pressure uh, as well. Either, either or. Yeah, somebody has to sell uh, and leave it at that or, or else it won't go down. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Afzal, my friend. Saba has formed a psychological floor because the addition of the former FBI assistant director. Are you going to short this thing? It's totally changed. I agree. The psychology has completely changed. This is a terrifying stock to short. A terrifying stock to short. $225 billion is too low. <laughs> they got the been former number three of the FBI. Yeah, I'm with you. XYED. Hi, Joe. First of all, thanks for all the info. Uh, thank you, my friend, for the kind words. Uh, will there be any dilution of shares? Nominally, there will be. But everybody knows about it already. So how come the, the price isn't down below 22 where they are effectively raising? So uh, there will be, there already has been announced. When we did our calculation, our latest calculation, we did 72, Alphazal said the number is now 72 point something million shares. And, that's, and, and so that's the number we're using now. And in, in the end, that's the full, if all of these warrants get exercised and all the compensation uh, shares uh, get exercised, that's the, the big number. So fine. But again, we're saying that number is lower than all the phantom shares out there. So that's why the stock price went from 21 to 28 and stayed there when they did a raise. Because it is a dilution in nominal terms, but maybe not in real terms. Afzal, I don't expect Sal to fall to 20, unlike before, I don't expect it to either. Afzal says, Alzion is also working on a drug that addresses, is that why you, is that why you, because they're working on the same type of uh, technology? I see this as positive for Sal, but I think it is somehow accepts Smithland's drug that works in fixing film and I, yeah, and then being first to market is huge. We talk about that in the boot camp as well. Being first to market uh, gets you a much bigger market share. Afzal improves that this mechanism of action is right. Yes, I agree. It's good validation. Yeah, with you. All right, great to see you guys. We'll do it again uh, tomorrow, and I'll see you in the Discord. Have a great night. See you in the Discord.